What's going on everybody? I'm Dory Goodman, the time teller. Happy Monday. Okay guys, so on Instagram every Monday there's kind of a trend. It's called Blue Watch Monday. Hashtag Blue Watch Monday. And uh, everybody takes pictures of blue watches. Now, this morning I was kind of thinking which watch will I choose to take a picture of? What would be a cool blue watch in my collection? And I ended up pulling uh, out my Pantor Seahorse. Now, Upon putting it on and wearing this watch, I was like, you know, I actually haven't done the full review yet, and I've spent enough time with this watch by now to really be able to give you my honest opinion. So stay tuned, because right now, we're gonna get into my opinions on the Pantor Seahorse. So this is the full review. Now, if you haven't seen the unboxing slash introduction, uh, watch that first. I'll be leaving the, the link in my description. So watch the unboxing, then come back here, and uh, I've spent some time with it now, so this will be the review. It's 12, 11 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, so if you're watching right now, I'm assuming you've seen the unboxing slash introduction, but real quick, we'll brush up on the specs of the Pantor Seahorse. It's a 45 millimeter diver, uh, it's 16 millimeters thick, so it's a bit thicker there, but it's got a 1,000 meter water resistance rating. It's got a sapphire crystal, and over here by the nine o'clock, it's got a helium escape valve. And this watch is powered by a Miyota 9015 automatic movement with a pretty smooth sweeping second hand. All right, so as I've said before, I've worn this a bunch now. I've gotten it wet numerous times. It's been fully submerged and I haven't gotten all the way down to 1,000 meters yet, but uh, so far I'm very confident in its water resistance capabilities. All right, so let's talk about it on the wrist. What does it wear like? Well, I've put it on this kind of two-piece navy blue NATO strap and I think it plays very well with the almost aqua teal bezel. I think it looks very nice. It's very, very comfortable. It's 45 millimeters. I have a set seven and a half inch wrist, so the watch isn't huge on me. It is 16 millimeters thick, which might be too thick for some of you guys, but again, I don't see it being a problem. Now, one weird thing about this watch, one thing that's a bit jarring almost, is that the rotor on this Miyota movement is incredibly loud, okay? Like, again, it's a bit jarring, and you really feel it when it's rotating on the wrist, like your wrist will start moving a bit because of the weight of that rotor. Um, not something I experienced with a lot of automatic watches, kind of the first time I've experienced it. So uh, yeah, that's the first negative about this watch. But again, guys, that's why I like doing kind of these two part reviews because that loud rotor isn't something I would have noticed unless I've worn this watch a bunch. And uh, yeah, I just want to be as honest and thorough as possible. Now I am really, really fond of the bezel and the serrations. Uh, again, the design of the serrations and how the bezel is actuated. It's just great. It feels great and it looks great. And uh, speaking of the looks, I don't know really what color that is, aqua, teal, it looks amazing and I think it plays well with that deep black dial. Indexes look amazing and the loom is, again, incredible. Uh, Super Luminova everywhere shines very, very brightly. And I really like that black dial and how it plays with that red second hand, um, looks cool. Now, speaking of the hands, here comes another negative. I think the hands are kind of cheap looking. I know it's just, it's a bummer because Overall, the watch is like really, really solid and it seems to be incredibly well made. I don't know why they didn't splurge a little bit and get more robust looking hands. The hands just look really thin and flimsy and uh, I don't know, that's, it's just a bummer. Maybe that's a silly complaint. Maybe I'm just being too critical, but leave me a comment. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear from you. So yeah, I mean, a 1000 meter water resistance rating with an automatic movement, a sapphire crystal and a helium escape valve for well under a thousand dollars is is really impressive, but uh, honestly, after reviewing all three of Pantor's watches, the Pantor Sea Lion is still the one to get. They executed upon that watch much better than these other two Pantors. The Seahorse seems to be a very cool, very well-made watch, but again, just the loud rotor with kind of the flimsy hands kind of turns me off, especially when they have the Pantor Sea Lion that looks amazing, super refined, super well executed, just a ton of detail, just a very, very solid watch for even less money than the seahorse so yeah 
check out the Pantor Sea Lion. I'll leave links in my description to that review, so check it out, you will not be disappointed. And there you have it, guys, my opinions on the Pantor Seahorse. I hope you enjoyed this Monday episode. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday, and I hope you absolutely crush it this week. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, guys, if you're watching this, you're new here, you haven't subscribed yet, please, I wanna urge you to consider clicking that subscribe button. It takes one second and it helps me out a ton. And while you're at it, go ahead and click that little bell icon so you do not miss an episode of The Time Teller. There's just so much more awesome content on the way and you don't want to miss it. I'm telling you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with other watch enthusiasts, other people that you think would enjoy this. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it.